Hello, hello, everyone. Hope you can hear me well. I'm losing my voice today. <coughs> all right. So happy to see you all here, and uh, <coughs> welcome to our talk about Terraform and GitOps. I want to start from a quick introduction. So my name is Alexander Matyushensev, and I'm a chief architect at Acuity, and also I'm a, a long-time maintainer of Argo project and lead of Argo CD subproject. And here is my coworker, uh, Junza. I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, um, this is Jun Zabal, and um, I'm a SRE at Acuity. Awesome. So <clears throat> I want to yeah, we spend so much time getting ready, so I just want to get started the presentation. So first, I wanted to <clears throat> just quickly go through agenda, explain what are we going to talk about. So uh, <clears throat> uh, you might be surprised this presentation is not going to be 100% focused on Kubernetes and uh, Argo, even though it's ArgoCon and KubeCon. So we will talk a bit about infrastructure that kind of beyond Kubernetes scope. And then we will switch and talk about Terraform and Tofu. And I know that Terraform changed its license. So basically, for simplicity, I'm going to refer to both Terraform and Tofu as Terraform, Terraform here. So we will cover use cases that we think or we learn from our customers are preferable for Terraform. And then we're going to talk about the developer experience uh, that engineers use you know, to manage Terraform, infrastructure using Terraform. And finally, we will <coughs> explain what problem we're trying to solve and introduce a new project and do an awesome demo. And with that, I want to start and uh, talk a little bit about uh, in <coughs> use cases of Kubernetes and what we learned is not necessarily needs to be managed by Kubernetes. So, before I start, I want to clarify that at Acuity, we are a big fan of Kubernetes and Argo, obviously. So we use Kubernetes pretty much to manage everything, all pieces of infrastructure we have. And we use Argo CD to manage Kubernetes. And <coughs> we recognize that Kubernetes is way beyond container orchestration. So we use it to provision certificates <coughs> and pretty much everything. Uh, but still, we work with multiple customers and communicate with a lot of <coughs> open source users. And we learned that organizations who are fully invested into Kubernetes still use infrastructure as code tools, such as Terraform, Tofu, and uh, Ansible, and many more, Pulumi. And so we kind of had a lot of those conversations in the last several years. And eventually, we had to uh, start some investigation because we just cannot ignore it that it seems like uh, tools like Terraform <coughs> actively used side by side with Kubernetes. And we, what we did, we basically, we tried to figure out why and we got a lot of uh, answers. Some of those uh, were pretty subjective. Let's say historically there was a team that liked to use a certain tool and they just like it this way and that's it. They prefer to keep using it even though a part of organization is on Kubernetes. And there were other answers, but two kind of stand out. And I have these two <coughs> here on, on the slide. So <coughs> one kind of response that was repeated often is there is a chicken and egg problem. So even with help of cloud providers like uh, Google, you know, with uh, GKE or EKS from Amazon, it's still challenging to provision a cluster and click ops is not really working. And so we need a cluster to first, to, you know, before we can use it to manage something else. So this initial, initial provisioning must be made by uh, another tool, like Terraform. And uh, <clears throat> another response was that in some cases, uh, teams do not want to have some kind of background job that continuously reconcile a piece of infrastructure and modify it just because it's extremely uh, critical for organization. And examples we were given is, it could be a database that has company data that cannot be lost, or a VPC with important network settings. And so <clears throat> engineers just did not want to use this continuous reconciliation loop, simply because they don't change it that often, and they want to change it very carefully. And so with that, we kind of learned that, uh, that you know, it seems to be fair that one of the infrastructure as code tools are going to be used by 
organization, even if they adopt Kubernetes. And so we decided to kind of uh, get a little bit more focused, <coughs> and we chose one tool, Terraform, simply because it happened. It was the most frequently mentioned in you know our conversation with customers, and we <coughs> decided to uh, see if we can help with developer experience. So we came with a heavy background of using Kubernetes, we like Argo CD, and we really thought that uh, engineers deserve one tool that covers all of their use cases, and so we tried to see can we improve developer experience. And before we jumped into a solution, we tried to learn what experience Terraform users have right now. And if you are a Terraform user who you know, used this tool for years, this is, would be very basic. Uh, so sorry, but I, I will try to just, it was kind of new for us, we learned it, and we realized that experience is kind of good. So Terraform is very much declarative, same as Kubernetes manifests. <coughs> Terraform files are usually living in a Git repository, so technically it's kind of GitOps. And the biggest difference we found is there is no controller that continuously <coughs> reconciling Git against the real infrastructure, and instead it's very much PR-based, so it's heavily relying on uh, UI provided by Git service provider, such as GitHub or GitLab, and engineers like to change uh, real infrastructure by using this very kind of controlled process where uh, engineer would preview changes first, really review them, make sure nothing unexpected is going to happen, and then use uh, something like GitHub bot to apply those changes. And so we came to a conclusion that we don't really know how we can help there. So uh, dev experience is good as well. And so we just kept looking and we tried to get even more focused and we looked at the place where Terraform and Kubernetes world kind of overlaps. And <clears throat> what we found is there are teams uh, who typically manage applications, not the core components of Kubernetes, and they still have to use Terraform to provision infrastructure tightly coupled with the application. And so uh, during the demo, we will go into like real life use cases. Here I have a few of them so sometimes we need to provision uh, IAM roles for application, and then we need to get uh, IRN and inject it into uh, our Kubernetes manifests, and this kind of linkage just has to happen. Uh, and we kind of try to categorize a set of those use cases, and this, this sentence tries to like, summarize it. So basically we need to run Terraform apply command and take a bunch of strings produced by Terraform and inject it somehow into uh, Kubernetes manifests. And so the next use case is, I kind of try to, I describe it as an orchestration of complex deployments. What that really means is uh, <clears throat> we often need to run Terraform to kind of prepare the ground and then proceed with the normal uh, deployment using GitOps tool like, Kuber like uh, Argo CD. And so uh, we feel like there is a gap there because uh, that Usually this process is manual. So it's kind of uh, definitely not ideal. And to support our theory is here is two links in Argo CD uh, open source repository. So it has a lot of thumbs ups. It's like 100 plus uh, positive reactions. And the request is enable, provide some functionality that allows uh, injecting values produced by Terraform into, managed, into manifest managed by Argo CD. And there is a reason why this issue is so popular but yet open. Uh, it's really difficult to add a tool, you know, support for one infrastructure as code tool like Terraform into Argo CD <clears throat> because it would, you know, later we would have to support more and more tools, so it's kind of opinionated. And uh, instead of building it into Argo CD, we decided to create a project that uh, alleviates this pain, uh, eliminates this pain, and uh, solve the problems that I, I just described. And so before we jump into the demo, here is a URL that has a getting started guide for a project. We are working on publishing the Git repository with the source code, uh, but we, we already can try uh, the uh, getting started guide. So image is uh, available in a public uh, Docker registry. And here I have 
I wanted to highlight that this project is only meant to integrate Terraform with Argo CD, and it's not meant to replace uh, Terraform clouds. So we're not going to compete with HashiCorp. Uh, we feel like existing set of tools is working perfectly. Uh, and what's missing is this integration with uh, GitOps, GitOps tools. Um, and I hope you had a chance to get the URL. And with that, I want to give it to uh, Junza to describe the project in details. All right. Thanks, Alex. So um, let's take a look at the architecture of the Upbridge. Um, like Alex mentioned, uh, this the Upbridge is basically a controller that can uh, fetch values from Terraform state file and then apply that to the workloads in, in your Kubernetes cluster based on a list of patches that you specify. With that, we're introducing uh, three custom resources. The first one is called a uh, cluster backend. This basically is a representation of uh, Terraform state. Uh, in this example, we are accessing the Terraform state stored in an S3 bucket. You, you only need to specify the bucket name, um, the state file name as the key, and uh, where, uh, which region the bucket is. Uh, it's, it's the same arguments that you need to specify for, uh, for your Terraform provider if you ever used S3 bu um, buckets as the backend of your Terraform state. Right now, we're only supporting S3 um, as the backend, but in the future, we're going to add more supported Terraform backends. Um, the second uh, CR that we are introducing is called TF state. This is a namespace scoped um, CR. Um, this is basically a list of patches that you specify, and um, we are going to fetch the values from um, through the cluster backend from the Terraform uh, state file, and then apply it apply the patches to, to the targeted workloads. In this example here, you can see uh, we're referring to the um, backend that were created before. And then in this patch, we are trying to target the service account uh, that has the name RDSSA. And since, this, uh, since this is a namespace scoped uh, resource, so we're only trying to find the service account in the same namespace as the TF state. And here we have a JSON patch. Um, we are trying to use the row ARN, uh, which, is, which is an existing output in your Terraform um, state. And then we're going to add that uh, row ARN to, to the annotation of the service accounts. Um, here, if you're familiar with Go templating, um, we're also supporting all the other functions uh, that come with this brick uh, Go, Golem uh, libraries. You are going to see them later in the demo. And here we only have um, a JSON patch, but it also supports a merge patch. Um, so the third resource would be uh, cluster TF state. And um, I, I think you can guess it. It's a cluster level TF state, which allows you to patch resources in uh, multiple namespaces. So the difference between the two states uh, CR is uh, the cluster TF state comes with a namespace selector in the target field uh, that can uh, uh, that can uh, that allow you to uh, target resources in other namespaces. You're also going to see it later in the demo. So now that you know uh, what TF Bridge can do, um, let's come. Let's see what kind of um, situations we can use TF Bridge for. Here are some example use cases that we ourselves are actually using. Uh, imagine you need to create ephemeral environments with databases for uh, your testing branches or ad hoc teams. The database CNAMs generated on AWS are usually uh, random, random names. So with TF Bridge, you can inject those uh, auto-generated CNAM into your config application configuration file or even the deployment itself uh, directly. And once you have the database in one AZ, you might want to ping some of the pods to the same AZ as the DB to simply reduce the cross-AZ traffic. It can be expensive sometimes. And what you saw 
previously in the, uh, what you saw before in the previous slide is uh, I am role for service account on AWS. Uh, if you're familiar with AWS, that's just a feature for, um, for you to uh, grant access to the service account um, to AWS services. Um, so you can inject the generated IAM role ERN to, to the annotations with TF Bridge. The last one would be, um, imagine you're using, I don't know, traffic. Um, you can use its middleware to uh, limit the ac application access to a set of allowed IPs. So with TF Bridge, you just need to store the NAT IPs in your Terraform state, and TF Bridge is there to grab that info and then add it to your ingress configuration. So let's go to demo, where I'll be uh, demoing those um, cases. Uh, what I'm gonna show is actually also available on the website that I, Alex showed before, so you can um, also try it out yourself. Okay. So here I have a normal Terraform um, repository. Uh, if you're familiar with any kind of Terraform repo, uh, here's the uh, configuration for, for the state. Uh, remember these values. We have a bucket, the key, and the region. Um, and for, for the demo purpose, uh, this is a very simple repo. We have a VPC that has two AZs. And in the, VP, uh, in the VPC, we're creating a, an RDS DB instance. That is not multi-IC. And then we have a EKS cluster which, on which we'll be running our application backend. And uh, we also have an IAM row, it's called API server, um, that can be assumed by the API server service account in the default namespace. And this IAM row has, uh, has access to, to the RDS instance that we just created. And so, so far, it's just uh, very simple, trivial Terraform uh, resources. Uh, what's interesting is here we're adding three outputs. Uh, first one would be the address of the DB instance and also the availability zone. And the last one is the row generator row ARN. So now if we do Terraform apply, you should be able to see the, the output um, at the end of uh, Terraform apply. Um, I've already applied this plan before, so there's no changes, but you can see the generated output in the state. Uh, you're gonna see the AZ of the DB instance and this uh, random CNAM that you need to use uh, that you need to supply to your application configuration so, so it can connect to the DB and the generated raw ARM. Okay, um, so uh, here is, um, I'm connected to the EKS cluster that was created. Um, it has nothing running on it, so just some basic uh, parts. Let's try deploy TF Bridge. Um, I, I've already have everything prepared, but um, like I said before, we introduced the three new CRDs. Um, here you can see this is the cluster backend, and this is the cluster TF state, so, which is a, a cluster scoped, um, a cluster, cluster scoped resource, and it also supports the namespace selector that you can uh, use to target resources in other namespaces and the TF state, which is uh, namespace scoped. And then we have normal deployment for the TF bridge, um, namespace, RBAC. Uh, for demo purposes, I uh, give full permission because it needs to access, like to operate on um, all your other workloads in your cluster and uh, service accounts. So let me first apply the namespace here, and then I'll apply the rest. Sometimes there's conflict between deployment and namespace. And here you can see um, the controller is being started and it should be running in just a sec. Uh, we're starting different, yeah. So now TF Bridge controller is running um, in your cluster. And let's try to use it. 
I prepare some manifest. Uh, imagine in our cluster we have uh, a simple deployment um, and a service account. Let's try to first apply that. So here we have an API server a pass running in the deployment uh, in the default namespace, and also we have um, service, a service account in the deployment uh, in the default namespace. And here I have a, a cluster backend, which refers to the same uh, S3 bucket that 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 is used in the uh, Terraform provider. You can see it's exactly the same values here. Let's also create this backend. We can also check this backend in the cluster. Um, if you go to the status part, um, you'll see it says connection test pass. Uh, the cluster backend is ready for use. It means the controller tries to access the state file um, in, in this bucket, and there is no network connection or permission issues. And uh, let's look at the cluster TF state that we're about to deploy. So it refers to the cluster backend that was created um, just now, and it tries to target the deployment in the default namespace uh, with this name. You can, add, you can add the name here as well, but if you don't do it uh, and you are using a merge patch, we're gonna use the name in the merge patch. And um, it tries to get the, the DBAZ from, from the uh, cluster backend, and then it's gonna be used in the node affinity uh, and, uh, of, of this deployment. We can also take a look at the TF state. Um, it's using the same backend. Here I have another merge patch um, where I, I didn't specify any target. So it's just gonna extract the information from the API version kind and the metadata name. So we're trying to target deployment uh, with the name API server in the same namespace as, uh, as this TF state. And then we are adding the RDSD name as uh, to the environment variable of this deployment. Here we have a second patch, uh, which is a JSON patch similar to the one that I showed in the slides. Uh, we're getting the row ARN and um, annotating the service account with the row ARN. The fourth one I commented out because I didn't set up a traffic, but if you are using traffic and you're using middleware, uh, to limit IP address, um, you can add this net IP list to your Terraform code, <coughs> um, have it planned, uh, applied, then that the IPs would be stored in Terraform state, and then you can do similar stuff here. Okay, let's try to apply plus to TF state and also uh, TF state. Oh, um, maybe I should have shown you the uh, deployment before, but um, <clears throat> now we can first check the cluster TF state. Oh, um, of course there is a there is an error, but um, what what is good is you can see here um, it tell, in the status part it tells you um, oh patch one has failed because um, the object has been modified so. I guess it's just because I applied the T, uh, cluster TF state and TF state at the same time, so there was a conflict in updating uh, deployment. In this case, no worries, you just need to add an annotation. Let's say force sync. You can do timestamp, you can do whatever. Um, after you add this annotation, uh, cluster TF state will be reconciled by the controller again. Now you can see it's fully applied. When you go check the status, it says all outputs have been applied. Let's also take a look at the uh, TF state. Um, here you can see it, it was uh, fully applied the first time. And um, let's take a look at the deployment API server. Uh, just wanna quick show you here. In, in the existing resource, the service account doesn't have any annotations. The deployment also doesn't have any uh, node affinity, uh, node, yeah, and also, no uh, environment variables, but now 
the deployment on the cluster has a node affinity with the same AZ. Um, it also has an uh, environment uh, variable. Um, same in the service account. Here you can see this uh, raw error and this also added uh, to the annotations. Yeah, I guess that's uh, what TF Bridge can do. Um, that's, that's all. All right. So we got time for maybe one or two questions. So anyone have a question? There's one back there. One second. Firstly, this is beautiful. This really crosses that boundary of from outside the cluster to the inside. So thank you for doing this. Um, question about the demo that you showed, it was quite simplistic. Usually you have modules out of which you're creating resources and you would have a separate RDS module and a separate Dynamo module, uh, things of that nature. And if outputs from both of those are required for a certain deployment, do you have to define multiple Terraform states if they go into different locations? Um, good question. I think um, right now we're only supporting root level output because uh, that's what's going to be stored in the Terraform state file. Uh, if you have, let's say, a module which is outputting uh, some values, you, you need to have an output uh, specified at the root level. So when you do Terraform apply, you're going to see those outputs. Okay, but even if there are multiple stacks? Like, what? if there are multiple stacks? I no, multiple states, I think you, I mean, not think. But I know that you can reference multiple. So in one Terraform state, Kubernetes resource, you can point it to two Terraform stores. Yeah. But are, like, multiple stacks, you mean multiple Terraform workspaces? No, stacks as in, like, a Terraform deployment. So if, what invokes the module? Um, I guess if you have different stacks, you're going to have different state files. Mm -hmm. So you can create a different cluster backends. What you need to change here is the key. Uh, so it points to different mm -hmm. Okay, so files. basically point to each and every state file. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. and you can reference in one Terraform state, which is this mapping, you can link two yeah. backends and then specify which one goes to where. So like in, for example, that's why here it's a list. We, if you have uh, several uh, backends, you can have, I don't know, uh, another, uh, backend ref, and then here down, um, you'll be uh, referring to it like this. Cool. Well, we have maybe one more question here. Yeah, one back there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does this continuously pull the Terraform state? So if you update your state, it'll automatically apply everything immediately to Kubernetes. Uh, it it does, but I believe it does it by, you know, based on a schedule. Basically, it keeps checking it continuously, and it's, once it sees a difference, oh. it... Yeah, I, I forgot to mention here. Uh, in the TF state, oh, you can specify how often you want it to be uh, refreshed. Yeah. All right. Uh, run, run out of time, so I guess hallway track for any other further questions, or at the Acuity booth, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you.